Hey everybody, guess what? There's a rooster in my shower. <laughs> and that's not a figure of speech. <laughs> Why can't we be friends? He's really looking in the eye right now. I think we're having a moment. Well, it snowed last night. It's really gorgeous. I wanted to come out here. I wanted to come out here and get some footage of the snow for y'all. So you probably <laughs> you probably are aware that uh, here in Tennessee we don't get a whole lot of snow. So um, whenever we do, I really like to go out and uh, take a walk. So I'm just gonna go out and check out the property a little bit. It's been raining for maybe a week now. So everything is super, super wet, which the ducks have been very happy with. Whenever you have small animals, cold weather makes things just a little bit more complicated. So this morning I came out after the chickens had already been fed. I came out again and <laughs> I had some old things out of the pantry that I wanted to give to the chickens. Clean it out the pantry, you know. New year, new food. You know how it goes. I uh, went to take him out and I was looking for this one rooster. I know, I knew he's been sleeping outside. Didn't see Maverick anywhere. That's the rooster's name. And I had a bad feeling. So I started looking around and I saw him out of the corner of my eye right where he sleeps on his perch. Which, if you know anything about chickens, that is not normal. They, when whenever it is feeding time, like the sun is up, they are out and on the grass, they're grazing. We keep all, all of our feet in metal cans. So whenever you open that lid, it's loud, they hear it, they all come running. And the fact that he did not get off of his perch, and it was probably about 9.45 at that point in the morning, so that's not good. So I kind of had to break open some of the uh, top fencing that is on over that coop where he was roosting and kind of pull him down. It was kind of awkward, but I had to get him down because his, so Polish birds have big, big, crazy, wild head pieces. So he wasn't really moving very much. He looked very lethargic and hit the, the feathers on his head was really frozen. They were like icicles and because we don't have that much of an infrastructure yet, uh, as far as barns and things like that, if there's a sick chicken, I usually doctor them in my shower. <laughs> it may sound kind of crazy to you guys, but that's what bleach is for. So uh, I have him in there right now. I have a little space heater in there that I've got jacked up to high, and he is thawing out as we speak. He is eating and kind of starting to move around. And so that's a good sign. He's okay, he just got cold. Polish chickens are not that high on the survival uh, hardiness of the chicken scale. Polish just don't have that much of a, I don't know, it probably wouldn't be in existence if humans did not breed them and keep them going, if you know what I mean. Uh, just might have been naturally selected out. But anyway, uh, Maverick is inside thawing out and I'll show you guys, I'll take you guys in there later uh, cause we gotta blow dry his little crest. I wanna get him nice and dry before I put him back out even though he's gonna get wet again. But let's go for a little walk. I'd like to show you guys the woods a little bit. I'm gonna go out to my yoga spot cause I just love that place in our woods. And I would love to see it with snow. It's been a while. Oh my goodness, you guys have to see this. I don't know about you, but whenever the snow falls and it's all over the ground, I, I just turn into a little kid again. And I'm just trying to restrain myself from running and jumping and rolling around in the snow because I'm not wearing the clothes for it. Do you remember when we were kids and we uh, were forced into those really thick uh, snow suits? Like 
well, I grew up in the 80s, so they're always like this kind of silky kind of windbreaker fabric on the outside and there was probably about like two inches of stuffing and you got like shoved into it and and like you know like the a Christmas story where the little boy couldn't even get his arms down that's that was real and <laughs> so now it's like I hated that thing but now I kind of wish I had one of those I mean I know they sell them for adults I have to find one I mean thing is like they sell the Carhartt ones but they're brown and I'm not really much of a brown kind of person, you know. I, I like a little flair. You didn't already know that. Okay, you guys have to see this, it's so gorgeous. of snow days. I'm from West Virginia. When I was a kid, we would have some really good snows and we raised horses also. And so um, one of my favorite things to do when it was snow was go up in the hills and ride the horses because they were Appaloosas and they're really sure-footed. You can take them pretty much anywhere. Headed into the woods now. I want to show you guys there's this pond back here and it's not always full oh look at that i'm such a nerd about it oh this pond isn't always full but i knew it would be right now because we've had so much rain this is out in the back of our property i haven't really taken you guys back here yet Oh, I just, it's perfectly reflecting all these trees. One of these days, I will do a whole homestead tour. Uh, I really want to show you guys my garden and the way it's set up. Uh, I am going to be doing a video soon about my greenhouse. Also, we're going to be getting some footage in soon about the house that we're building. So, there's lots to come. Probably the only reason that I get a little nerded out and excited about snow is because I don't have to deal with it all the time. It is so beautiful. Okay, let's go in and check on Maverick. Thing is, it's crust, it's pretty wet. So, I'm guessing I might have to get out the blow dryer. But when roosters come to full maturity, they're kind of jerks. Imagine the most macho man that you've ever met in your life. Kind of like combine it with some roid rage and make it a large bird with spurs, which is up to three to four inch talons, pretty much and then sprinkle on a little extra testosterone. That's a rooster's personality. All right, we're back in the camper. As you can see, I haven't taken my Christmas decorations down yet because I really love them and I don't want to yet. But we're gonna go into my tiny camper bathroom and we're gonna try to doctor this rooster. I will tell you, this is not the first chicken that has been doctored in my bathroom. There's been a few ducks in there too, somewhere. I think turkeys as well. Like I said, that's what bleach is for. Wish me luck. Hopefully I don't get spurred. Well, this is gonna be interesting. So remember when I said that some roosters, sometimes they don't mind being held and sometimes they're 
crazy lunatics while this one kind of falls more on crazy lunatic. He's in the shower now. He's not looking happy. Okay, Maverick. Mm. Maverick. Hey, buddy. It's okay. Let's not be scared, okay? Okay, okay. That wasn't bad. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Um, this is Maverick. He's a, he's a pretty good boy, aren't you, Maverick? He just doesn't like to be held. Um, so, remember the spurs I told you about? He is fairly young. His spurs are still short yet. They will grow. And they are very short. This one, mm -hmm. okay, all right, I'm sorry. Showing with the camera. See that? Mm hmm. They are pretty sharp. Roosters have this amazing skill to throw, they, they can be standing up and they spread their wings and they throw their feet out, like where they kind of curl their, their front feet forward and they can whack you with these spurs. And when they're really, when they're really, really long, I mean, this one is enough to go like way into your leg, but doesn't matter if I'm wearing, you know, thick jeans or anything. They have this way of aiming right for your shin, like right in the tender muscle around your shin. Just bam. I have many a, a hole in my leg uh, from aggressive roosters. He is a white crested Polish, white crested black Polish, and the females have this perfect little dome quaff uh, over their head, but the males, as you can see, it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more wild. And another cool thing about Polish is they have these kind of like devil horns on their head. You see that? And they'll just get old. They'll get longer as he gets older, but they're pretty cool. You're doing so good, buddy. You're doing so good. Oh, see, we could be friends. We could be friends. Yeah, this is not too bad, right? Hmm? Not too bad. Could we be friends? Why can't 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 we be friends? He's really looking in the eye right now. I think we're having a moment. We're having a moment. Oh, precious boy. It's okay. He's not gonna like this. He's not gonna like this. Do you wanna smell it? It's called a blow dryer. Now it's gonna make a noise like a, ooh, okay. Okay, not freaking out yet. Okay. What a good boy. I think he likes it. <laughs> okay, he likes it. Now there is such a thing as show chickens. And those chickens get baths and blow drying all the time. And they really are used to it. This guy has never experienced this before. Also, I'm very surprised that he hasn't pooped on me yet. Oh, he's fabulous. He's a fabulous boy. Look at him. Whee! And uh, Polish roosters, they also have these really cool tail feathers. They kind of, they usually have two really, really long ones and they kind of V out and arch and they make this really pretty silhouette. But right now they're really wet, so they're not very springy. You wanna get your close up? Yeah. See, I'm a handsome boy. I'm a handsome boy. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, see, 
we could be friends. Oh, do you love me now? You love me now. You look good, kid. He seems pretty alert. He's eaten and, and, and drank something and it's pretty dry now. <laughs> okay okay he's over it I'm gonna take him back outside and let just kind of observe him for a minute and make sure he's doing okay but I think he's okay now I think he just needed to come in and get dried off and, and thawed out well that wasn't too bad uh, some minor little freak outs but nothing too crazy nothing I can't handle I thought he did pretty good I'm kind of proud of Maverick here I am back in the living room now I'm gonna get some sit-down work done as I call it Got some editing and some band business and some new year goals to set and get organized. That's always fun and a little daunting, but I keep hearing from people around me and I feel like it's maybe the, maybe gonna be my theme for the year is, is one step at a time. Don't step back and look at the whole picture and think, I have to get all of this done right now. I have to, I have to accomplish this goal. I have to hit it head on and and in a way, you know, you do want to hit it head on, but at the same way, if you think about it from little bites, little pieces, little steps, it feels so much more manageable. The thing with me is I kind of get afraid that if I take it too slow, then I'll lose momentum. But the thing is, if you go at it too hard, then you're exhausted or you burn out and you lose momentum with it anyway. So. I'm really going to try and discipline myself this year to take small steps. And, and actually starting this YouTube channel has been a big part of that. I put it off for a long time for years because I thought, oh, this is this huge, you know, undertaking. I don't have the skills. I don't have the equipment. And you know, this would be different. Well, I would like for this to happen and whatever, fill in the blank. I had all these excuses and now that I've started it, I, I told myself, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do it like my, like it's my job. And I'm loving it. This is great. I've, it's very therapeutic. It's a lot of fun. I've loved the feedback from you guys. I have loved the conversations that I've had with people after they've seen the videos. It's really an honor to me that you guys would take the time to sit and watch this video and respond and subscribe and uh, just be involved and, and be a part of this community because it's, this is our very, this is a very dear labor of love to our hearts. And I am very excited to see it unfold with you all. <clears throat> it's kind of difficult sometimes because that little bit at a time is never better exemplified than it is here on the homestead because it's just Jeremy and I, and it's, one little bit at a time. It's as we have time to do things. It's as we have the budget to do things. And so everything looks so glacially slow and sometimes it can be so discouraging. But sometimes like today, I just walk around the property and I look at the snow on the trees and the water in the pond and watch <clears throat> the cats and the dogs and the ducks and the chickens playing around and poking around the yard and, and just enjoying their life and it reminds me of why I'm here and what we're doing and that this is worth it the the little bit at a time the constant struggle it feels like sometimes to achieve this goal and to see this come to fruition is worth it and if, if, if I can just take this, could that concept, and if any of us can just take that little concept and try and work it out in the rest of our lives, it would do us a lot of good, I think. I, it, it's something that I really struggle with because I wanna see things happen. It's, and, and the other thing is we're working on the, uh, well, I say we, Jeremy, is working on getting all the electrical lines and everything put up in the house. And that's not something that's exciting to see. It's not something that you, look back and go, oh, wow, you know, this beautiful wood paneling is all up and finished and it's beautiful, or 
look, the kitchen cabinets are done. Now I can put my dishes in there. It's not like that. It's all behind the walls. It's tucked in up and up into things. And it doesn't seem like anything is happening right now. But I know, and I have to keep reminding myself, that you need electricity. You need it. I mean, it's really handy anyway. So that thing is needed. This time is needed. And while it's frustrating to wait and, and not see results, it's worth it in the end when I can go inside of my finished house, flick that light switch, and the light comes on. Um, so just be encouraged. This time of year can be very daunting, especially just the couple days, the few days after New Year's, because you're really fired up, like leading up to it. And then the day or so after, maybe you started a new workout or a new diet or something, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm, I'm gung ho, I'm really excited, I'm really encouraged. And then maybe you get on the scale expecting to see results and you don't see any yet. Or maybe you look in the mirror and expecting to see results and you don't see it yet. And, uh, or maybe you look at your bank account and you're saying, this is this goal that I've set for myself to save this certain amount of money is going to be so lofty. And I don't even know if I can ever get there, but if you can just with me, along with me, try and, and strive to every day, remind yourself that anything worth having is worth waiting for anything that is valuable and and is will stand the test of time takes time so be gracious with yourself have mercy on yourself <laughs> show grace to yourself in this time because you're just getting started and and even though we've come as far as we have sometimes it feels like we're still just starting and I have to stand back and I have to walk through the property and I have to look at the trees and I have to look at the land and and look at how far we've come from this just totally virgin piece of land with, you know, weeds as high as my head, literally, and, and thick brush and trees everywhere. And, and it didn't necessarily look like the easiest place to put a house, but my husband and I are visionaries and we see something and we see what it can be. And so I have to tap into that daily and some days, it's not there. Some days I try to tap into that and I can't. And those are frustrating days, but I will tell you, I have such a wonderful group of friends that are so encouraging. And you guys here are so encouraging to me. I get so many personal messages saying, you know, just, just keep at it. You guys have come so far. We love to watch what you're doing. I know, I know in my head, I know in my head that what we're doing is worth it. But sometimes in my heart, it doesn't always reach my head. Sometimes it kind of stops here because I get discouraged and it kind of falls back down to a discouraged heart. And that's a really hard place to be when you're trying to reach a goal and to achieve something. But I encourage you as I am encouraging myself in this moment to stick with it and pick something every day. There's a, a Japanese uh, technique uh, where you just spend one minute every day doing one thing and it's something that you're wanting to accomplish or be better at and if every day you do this for a minute you find yourself adding on minutes and then it's five minutes then it's 15 minutes then it's 20 minutes and then it's an hour and then it becomes a daily discipline in your life that that holds a presence and gives you uh, somewhere to grow from and eventually you find yourself knowing how to do this new thing or accomplishing this goal. So if we can all just take a minute and give ourselves a little slack, we can do this. We can do this. We've got this. So happy new year to all of you. I hope that you can spend every day just chipping away at your goal and really achieving them because it's possible. It, it is possible and and the, the things that are the hardest to achieve are the things that take the longest sometimes so don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen overnight don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen in two months in three months sometimes things take years we've been here building this property up for four years now and it is discouraging sometimes to see that we haven't done more 
but we made that decision early on to not get a go get a bunch of loans because we wanted to do it without debt. We wanted to do it as we have the budget. That to me at our age and our at this stage in our life, we're both artists. We both want to uh, spend more time directed at uh, directed towards our art and to reaching those goals. Uh, and so to own your home and to own the property that it's on is just invaluable. And it's a goal that's taken us a long time. This, this goal actually started maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago when we bought our first property in West Virginia for practically nothing. It was a foreclosure. The house was absolutely inhabitable. All the windows were busted out of it. It was built in the late 1800s and we had to do a ton of work to it. All the prop the whole property was up on a hill and uh, it wasn't it wasn't the most ideal land. Uh, we renovated everything in there and we did a lot of work to the property and we sold it and then we moved here and we lived in that house for a little while, fixed up some things, and then we sold it and built the property here. So don't look at us and think, oh, well, they must have gotten inheritance or something to have a chunk of money to buy a, a big piece of property like that and to build and everything, because no, we didn't. We have done this all through just hard work and sacrifice. It's just, it's a long game. It's not a short game. And don't be discouraged when you don't see results all the time, because you eventually will. One of these days, you will turn around and you will see your journey. You will see what you worked for and the goal will come to fruition and you will reap the benefits of all of your sacrifice and all the time put in. And that will be a beautiful moment. I mean, we've, I hope we've all been there at some point in our lives where we work for something and realize that we did it and it was worth it. And it's those victories that make the daily sacrifices and the daily toil worth it. So I just hope you guys are encouraged in this new year. I know that it's been really rough. We have to keep ourselves encouraged the best we can. And let's just do that together as best we can. If you see somebody that looks discouraged, take a second. Even if you're the one that's discouraged, take a second and encourage them. I guarantee you, you're gonna feel better. I guarantee it's gonna encourage you. Sometimes it's just a kind text, an encouraging text that makes such a huge difference in someone's day. Uh, if you can do that, I think you'll find yourself becoming encouraged. I think you'll find yourself becoming more excited about achieving your goals and feeling ready to take it on. I hope that this new year is a year that you see goals achieved. I hope that this is a year that you see the things that you've been wanting for, the things that you've been working for, I, I hope that you see it come to reality this year. And I hope that you can keep the strength and keep the faith. So we'll be doing it together. And I wish you luck. I wish you love. I wish you hope in this new year. Happy New Year, y'all. Love you.